Hello guys, welcome today to a new series on Orchard Core CMS and I will be creating a new decoupled CMS site and this is the part one of a new playlist on Orchard Core CMS. Now introducing these series of lectures will let you get through a fully functional decoupled CMS website that lets you edit blog posts and render them. So decoupled is a model in which the front and the back end of a website are both hosted on the same web application but only the back end is driven by a CMS. And front end code can then be created with controllers and ASP.NET pages by the developer. So basically as developer it's very welcoming concept this decoupled CMS that you know you can use a back end and a database but you have the liberty, you have the flexibility and freedom to create the front end as you like. You know, you can uh, just uh, design it yourself, you can code it yourself, modify it yourself. So that is a decoupled CMS website as opposed to a conventional CMS, which is like WordPress that many of you may be familiar with, where you have little chance to use your skills as a developer. So having said that, this would give the developers a total control, as I was telling just now, of the contents of the website while still utilizing the CMS to author content. All right. And then in this lecture, we'll be creating the Orchard Core CMS web application. But hang on, for those who have seen my first uh, one of the other lectures on Orchard Core CMS web application, this is a bit different because we will actually be setting up the project for a blog post which we will take up in a later lecture. All right. So what sh you should be able to do after attending the complete lecture? This lecture covers the following topics, creating the Orchard Core CMS web application, testing the website, adding Orchard Core CMS to the website, and setting up a new site for blog posts. And in my first lecture, which has got many viewers, um, it has been created with an different recipe. It was not meant for blog posts. So this will be different and I will be building on this first lecture to do many more things. So please watch on the entire series and watch this video from start till end. I am sure you will definitely like it and gain from it. Now I have flipped over back to Visual Studio 2019 and create a new project. I'll carry on using the ASP.NET Core web application and then click on next. Give it a name. Orchard site. Click on create. Go with ASP.NET Core 3.1 and web application and go with this default okay and this is i am going to use the asp.net razor pages content this is web application template click on create so the project is created for me in visual studio now let's run this application before we do any configuration to bring in the orchard core cms so click on iis express icon over here now my new website looks like this this is a uh, ASP.NET Core Web is um, Razor page template. So this is the traditional welcome message and Orchard site because that is the project name and home and privacy links. All right. Now this is before we actually configure it to run it with Orchard Core. So stay on. So let's close this application now. Now I will click double click the Orchard site to open the project file. Okay, so here I have got a target framework, Netcore app 3.1, that is .netcore 3.1, and then I'll have to add another attribute over here, another tag rather, which is preserve compilation references and make it true. Now this will allow for the razor pages to be reloaded without the need to recompile them. And I'll also have to add a new item group. Okay. So that new item group will be below this property group. And I will come to that in a minute. This will add a package reference. This is the 
NuGet package. So after these changes, I will build this application with Control Shift and B key combination. So after successful build, I'll have to get the startup file and reconfigure the startup class. So for this, I'll have to get rid of this add razor pages and bring in add orchard CMS. So this is giving me a light bulb icon. So Arch after rebuilding again, it is now allowing me, this is uh, now this add orchard CMS is available. All right. And then I will just semicolon. I will end this code. So add orchard CMS, what it does, this is actually adding the orchard core CMS. And when you are bringing this, this method for adding the orchard core CMS, the add razor pages is called internally or invoked internally by this add orchard CMS. Now next changes set of changes are in the middle layer pipeline in the configure method. So if you don't know about middleware, I will put a link in the video description about some middleware um, tutorials in one of my ASP.NET Core playlists. So please go through them. And then after coming back to the point, we will get rid of all the middlewares below the app.use static file and instead we will use app.use orchard core. All right. So with these changes, we'll again run the application. Now it comes up with the setup and that was our expectation. So give it a name. So whatever name you choose, that's up to you. And I choose this, the name my site and I'll go for this recipe blank site. Okay. So it creates a blank site with content management features, right? And there is a headless site. It creates a headless site with content management, GraphQL, and, but I'll go for this blank site for this project. And then super admin, super user, I will name the super user admin. And this is my email. And I'll choose, I'll have to choose a password strength. Password must have at least one non-alphanumeric character, one uppercase, one lowercase, one digit and six characters in total. That is the minimum. So let me confirm the password. Click on finish setup. Now the same site as the original template it was, it is now again displayed with the welcome. And in the next lecture, I'll show you how to configure the admin to create blog posts. So see, see you till then.